I don't want them to look like ba bam brows. Are you doing it right now? The brow bunny looks so real. It looks so good. Tell me everything you know. Like I've just had like oop, just a little area that's like itched for a second. Like after childbirth, pain is relative. Don't get them wet and don't scratch them. I can handle it. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to have a casual sit down conversation all about my microbladed eyebrows. I got my eyebrows microbladed um, just about a month ago. So a couple videos ago, I posted my brow routine and I did that less for the tutorial of it all and more for proof of really what my eyebrows looked like before, but also that you can see what my brow routine was before and kind of why I wanted to get them done. So why don't we jump to the good stuff right now and show you my before and after. I should note that in both the before and the after picture, I don't have mascara on because as a part of that brow routine, like I just done my face makeup. Um, but right now, currently, I have no product in my eyebrows. I do add a little bit of either a brow pencil or a brow uh, gel to it now and it takes literally 30 seconds to a minute where before I was spending five to ten minutes on my eyebrows before after so this is dramatically streamlined my morning routine for sure almost a year ago um, back in December at a holiday party I was introduced to Lisa who in Grand Rapids is known as the brow bunny I think I probably pushed her up against a wall and talked to her about eyebrows for an hour <laughs> so I was like Tell me everything you know. So it probably wasn't until the end of January that I booked my appointment. So the reason that I'm telling you guys this is because if you want microblading done or if you want it done in your local and you want it done by Lisa, she's booking out months in advance. So when I made my appointment in January, she didn't have any availability until June. And she had told me in advance, if you're out in the sun a lot in the summer, then you shouldn't get them done in the summer. And I'm a stay at home mom and I'm with my kids outside almost all summer. So I opted to make my appointment in September. I almost didn't book the appointment because of the lead time, but the truth of the matter is time passes by so fast and if I hadn't booked that appointment, I still wouldn't have my eyebrows done. While I do know Lisa, I didn't get any discount or anything or this isn't sponsored or that type of thing. This is all just something that I wanted to do for you guys about the process. So my opinions are on my own and she doesn't know what I'm going to say. I booked my appointment with her well before I had a YouTube channel, because it was back in January. So just wanted to give you that disclaimer. I have just arrived outside of Siren and Proper for my microblading appointment for my eyebrows. So let's go in and meet Lisa. So I am here with Lisa. She's already drawn on in black. Um, is it like crayon? It's a little marker marker just kind of where we're gonna do the strokes and then we're gonna put the numbing cream on and then start slashing my face <laughs> <laughs> and i'm really kind of nervous um but the one thing that i wanted to address with lisa is that i i didn't want my eyebrows to look exactly perfect every single day um, so when i wake up i i want to be able to fill it in a little bit more if i want to and so i don't want to have like perfect brows like all the time. I just want this is kind of more natural and wispy and looks like real hair and I can fill this in a little bit more if I want. So that was sort of my goals and what we discussed. Yes. And I was very excited because that is a very realistic expectation of what microblading is. Oh good. Because it's not supposed to look like Instagram makeup eyebrows. It's right. just supposed to look like your natural brows in here. Oh, yeah. Which is perfect. Yay! <laughs> you gotta look What's your book like, in advance? Yeah, like how far out are you book? You're booking like months out. Yeah, right now we're booking in towards. I think it's a little bit shorter of a gap. So right now it's like November. Okay, got numbing cream on right now, and I've just kind of filled out some paperwork. And I think it takes 30 minutes for the numbing cream to set. And I didn't know until I just looked in the viewfinder right now that this was there, which I think is maybe for the color. So we've done this one part of the way. She's gonna touch it up. A little bit more but we've done the first pass of this side and now we're starting on this side and are you doing it right now I, was. I mean I can't I couldn't feel that I couldn't feel it when she started over here because it's of course numb and I didn't feel it at all and then the further she went on I could feel it a little bit but it wasn't it wasn't bad at all it wasn't painful wouldn't you agree after you've had children the pain scale just goes out the window 
this is like a 0.5 on the pink You're scale right. of yeah this is nothing this is nothing <laughs> all right <laughs> So here is morning two, or actually morning one, day two. So I did all of my face makeup except for I didn't do anything with my eyebrows because obviously I can't do anything with them for the next two weeks, I would say. I haven't experienced any itching or any discomfort at all. So, so far my care instructions from Lisa have been fairly easy. The main goal is don't get them wet and kind of just don't touch them. If they hurt a little bit, I can kind of tap them like a weave tap, you know, if they like start to itch. And then she gave me a little bit of oil that I can put on them if it gets bothersome, but I haven't used that yet. And then she gave me what kind of looks like a makeup remover wipe, but I, I don't think that's what it is, but um, to wipe them down in the morning and at night. Just pretty easy care-wise, just don't get them wet and don't scratch them. I can handle that. So I am at the week mark, actually a week and a day since I've had the eyebrows done, and I haven't had any itching or discomfort. I might have had, maybe I could count on my hand, like the amount of times that I've just had like, ooh, just a little area that's like itched for a second. I know that they're supposed to change in color and so I feel like maybe they're, I don't know, a little darker right now. I'm not sure. I feel like right now they haven't really scabbed and maybe, I mean, I think they are scabbing a little bit right now, but it's not what I anticipated the scabbing being, I guess, because it's such little cuts that it's almost, I would explain it as like, like a dry scalp or something. You know how sometimes you have like a dry scalp and you just have a little bit of like flakes or something. It's almost like that. Like it's just so teeny tiny. Um, and I feel like you can't tell, but it does look kind of spotty right now because it's still healing and whatnot. They're changing in color or maybe it's the the dryness of some of them that it just looks a little strange but this is the phase that that it goes through and so I think within the next week it, we should be done with that. So the whole process took about two and a half hours I would say and I was recording and asking her some questions and so you know it might have been two hours had I not done that. A lot of the process is really like mapping out and measuring and seeing where the structure will be and then putting the numbing cream on and then going through and actually doing the cutting um, the microblading portion and then slapping pigment on everywhere and leaving that to sit for a little bit. And so the actual microblading part of the program probably only took like 20 minutes. So prior to getting my eyebrows done, I had saved a lot of pictures of different microblading that I had seen and what I liked. I actually didn't end up showing them to Lisa. I had posted that eyebrow routine literally the day before I got my eyebrows done and sweet Lisa was like, okay, I watched your video and I saw how you're doing your eyebrows. I was very open with her about, I might not be doing my eyebrows right, so you tell me how they should be done, but I prefer, you know, a larger, more natural looking brow. And what I had said to her that I wanted, and I think it's kind of important going into it to know what you want, I had told her I would like for my eyebrows when I wake up, I want them to be bigger and bolder in shape, but I don't want them to look like ba bam brows. I want to have the option to fill them in a little bit more. But now when I leave my house, I don't feel like I have to do my brows every single day. And if I do want to do them, like I said, it only takes like 30 seconds to a minute, so it's not really a big commitment. So it's nice to have that option of my eyebrows look really good, but they don't look like super bold eyebrows and then the rest of my face is naked. Right now the rest of my face is done and I don't have anything in my eyebrows. So now the question that I think everybody wants to know is, does it hurt? When she first started it, I couldn't feel it at all. I was like, did you just do it or not? <laughs> but the more she did it, the more I could start to feel it. And I don't know if it was that the numbing cream was wearing off a little bit, but it it didn't, it wasn't unbearable. It was definitely at times I was like, ooh, but it was kind of, I guess, like a little paper cut to your face a little bit. <laughs> and so if it did bother me a little bit, I was just thinking to myself, like, you're not gonna have to do your eyebrows every morning, so just take one for the team right now and you'll be good for like a year to 15 months, I think is typically how long it lasts. It kind of depends on your skin. After we finished, I basically sat there in shock for a minute. <laughs> okay, you guys, I just freaked out for like a legit 15 <laughs> minutes because I cannot believe that this looks so real it looks so good because i was so surprised how beautiful they looked how real they looked i couldn't tell like what was real hair and what wasn't i mean i was 
literally in shock. And so I had plans that night. They looked perfect. So if you have plans, I think you can definitely go out um, immediately after. The very next day, I had a John Mayer concert to go to. I was worried that I was going to be looking like a scabby, crazy mess. And I would say that my eyebrows remained perfect looking for probably five to six days. They didn't really start scabbing until I really got into that second week. Now, like I said, after about the first week, I started to notice um, some scabs, but it wasn't like, I guess I was just expecting that maybe the whole thing would be one big scab or something. I don't know, but these are such tiny, teeny, tiny, you know, hair like cuts. It felt just a little bit of texture. And once I really looked in the mirror, it just looked like I had teeny tiny dandruff in my eyebrows kind of flaking off. And so you just, you know, try not to touch that and do anything with that. But it's not, I didn't feel like it was anything that anybody would really notice unless they were super close to me. So I didn't feel self-conscious about it. I didn't change my plans at all. I just continued to live life. Now, the one main rule that you're supposed to follow with your aftercare instructions is not getting your eyebrows wet. I usually take baths and not showers. So that was really pretty easy for me because I was either to just like dunk my hair back or I was able to use the handheld thing and if you've seen my skincare routine, I use a solid balm cleanser to take my makeup off. And so I would just use that at night, you know, around my face and around here. And I just avoided my eyebrows, you know, did my eyes. And then I just use a wet washcloth per usual to remove it. And so it was really easy to avoid my brows and not get them wet. So the final step of the microblading process is that I have an appointment to get them touched up. And so I'm still a month out from that, but at that point, We'll go, I'll go back and reassess and see, are there certain areas where I want a little bit more shape? Do I want them to be darkened up a little bit? You know, did anything with the healing process get kind of ruined or flaked off? So we'll just sort of reassess and touch up whatever needs a little finessing. After Lisa had finished microblading my brows, I remember looking and saying like, oh, I feel like I need a couple more hairs right down here. And she tells me that I've been overfilling it in right here. So we're gonna leave it and see how it goes. And then we're going to, at the touch up, we'll discuss. So we'll add more or not. <laughs> and that's just kind of how I was filling them in. I was kind of trying to match them identically. And you know, the whole like eyebrows are sisters, not twins thing. She told me, well, this side actually grows straighter and this side goes up and arches a little bit more. And so she had said, this gives you a little bit more lid space. So just kind of get used to it. And she was completely right because I was probably drawing my brows in way too low. I feel like it gave me like a mini brow lift or something. Having seen the process of microblading your eyebrows, I feel like it's definitely an art. It's definitely something that you want to do your research on when you're looking at where you get them done or who does them. And it's definitely not something that you want to skimp on or take the cheap alternative. And this is going to be on your face for a year or a little bit more. Make sure that you're comfortable with the person and that you like their work, that you've seen their work. For sure, I would spend a little bit more money to make sure you're getting exactly what you want. Hopefully that gave you a little bit of information on microblading and how the process works. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you again in my next video. Bye.